continue with our story of Cornelius and Peter. This is found in Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 11. This is the longest narrative in the book of Acts. It's 66 verses long. That's pretty long, huh? There's a reason for it. It's important. It's important. God always gives space to things that are important in His Word. And God always uses repetition to, rem to, to underline what is important in His Word. And we see both of those in this story. So, longest narrative in the book of Acts, number one. Number two, this, the story of Cornelius on the side of Cornelius and Peter, the dream that Cornelius has, uh, sorry, the vision, it's not a dream, it's a vision as he's praying, of the angel coming in um, and talking with him and saying, God has heard your prayer. He has seen your good. He has seen your your deeds of, of charity, um, and sent to Joppa and ask for a man called Simon Peter, and he will give you the message of how you may be saved. Cornelius's part of the story is told how many times? Four. I used to think. Wow, so repetitious. And then, you know, I became an English teacher and I really thought so repetitious um, because that's, how it, that's what I would mark off when I would grade papers and things like that. But I have learned that it's important and that's why God has it repeated four times. The Peter part of the story, uh, the, the trance, the vision that Peter is given of the sheet that comes down out of heaven, always one of my favorites when I was a kid in Sunday school, right? I mean, how great is the visual on that? This sheet full of animals, right? What kid doesn't love that part of the story, right? Um, that part is told fully twice and then summarized one more time. So four times on Cornelius' side, three times on Peter's side. It's important. It's important. And so we continue with it today. We'll finish up this part of it. And then next week we've got a special speaker. We're gonna love you're gonna love Richard Sharp. Then Pastor Renee is starting a new series um, after that. And so we're gonna finish up with this one today. By the way, I'm not going through this event in a systematic way as I normally do when I'm teaching Acts because we know this story very well and it's actually pretty straightforward. We'll come back to it again later but the Lord has put on my heart some other things for us to look at, um, at from last week and this week as well. We see Cornelius, this good man as many of us, right? We're good or we, let me put it this way, we try to be good, yeah? yeah. We try to be good. We look at Cornelius, who's very sincere. We're sincere, right? Unless we're just wicked hearted, we're, we're sincere. We look at Cornelius, who is doing good deeds, and he's doing them sincerely. Yeah? We look at Cornelius, who is devout, he's, he's upright, and has a good reputation. We look at Cornelius, who is praying regularly, probably has a more disciplined prayer life than some of us. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. And we look at this man, and what I want us to see this morning is this. Cornelius is a perfect picture of religion. Yeah? He's a perfect picture of religion. He's doing what he knows to do, and he has a certain amount of truth, right? There are some things that he knows. That's, brothers and sisters, that's a perfect picture of religion. It really is. Now, the external things may be a little bit different. If you go to Tibet, religion will look a certain way. But you will see devout, good people doing good works who are praying, who have a little bit of truth that are doing the best they can do. You can go to India or Pakistan. And you'll see people, the externals will be different, but they will be praying. They will be sincere. They will be doing the best that they can do. We can come here in Hong Kong and go to certain temples or certain churches or to our own home countries. And we will see exactly what we see with Cornelius. Just the externals look different. Everything else will be the same because 
That's the picture of religion. And, we, and that's something we need to see this morning. And it is to such a person, we talked about this last week, but I just want to re, we remind you again because this is the important part of the story. It, it, um, it, it's, I think it's one of the, the main points. There are other points in this story. It's God giving salvation to the Gentiles, opening the church to Gentiles fully. Um, but this is part of it as well. The angel says to this picture of religion, a religious man, he says, send to Joppa, call for Peter, he will speak words to you by which you and all your household will be saved. We need to get that in our hearts, brothers and sisters, whether it is for ourselves or for someone else. All of these things, religion, sincerity, prayer, good deeds, giving, all of these things can be good things, but they cannot save us. They cannot save us. It's the picture of religion. It's the picture of religion. God did not invent religion. Man invented religion around the world. What was God's answer to man's religion? God's answer to man's religion was Jesus. And religion is man's attempt to get to God. And Jesus is God's way to get to man. And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He doesn't, he doesn't make any excuses. Sometimes we make a lot of excuses, don't we? We, <laughs> we try to soft pedal. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And that's what we see in this story of Cornelius and Peter being sent to him. It's a beautiful picture of... It's a realistic picture of man doing the best he can to reach God. And God saying, here's what I do to reach you. If you go through any religion, oh my goodness, all of the rules, all of the guidelines, all of the things that you must do, all of the things that you must not do, it's pretty complicated. God gives Jesus and He did it all for us. And all we have to do is receive Him. That's what God did for us. And so as I said last week, don't get upset and don't get mad. Oh, Christianity is so exclusive. Jesus is really the only way? Yes. He's the only truth? Yes. He's the only life? Yes. Yes. Don't get hung up on that. Instead, as I said, be thankful that there is a way to God and that God has shown us that way in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. God gives us Jesus and he says, I am the way. I am the way. If anybody could have merited salvation, it would have been Cornelius. If anybody deserved to be saved, it would have been Cornelius. And you can look at any religion of the world and you will find people that are just like Cornelius. Some of us may have been that way at one time. Some of us may be that way today because I don't know everyone here. And let this true story be a picture and speak to our hearts. God gives us Jesus. God gives us Jesus. What does he say? Peter begins to preach. And by the way, I am truncating the story. I'm really, I'm, I'm not going through it all because we could easily read this is what happens in the story. Um, but as we look, Peter begins to preach and he says, ah, now I realize how true it is. God really doesn't show favoritism. You know, we are so hard-headed, aren't we? And I'll, I'll get to this a little bit later, but let me go ahead and mention it now, just in case we run out of time at the end, which so seldom happens to me. Uh, <laughs> We look at this, and Peter says, I now see. And folks, think about what Jesus said to Peter. Jesus said to all of his disciples, he said to a, a, a Gentile, and his disciples heard, he said, every people will come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. The Old Testament, which Peter knew very, very well, it said that all men will fear him and call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus himself said to Peter, go into all the world, preach the gospel to the Jews. No, preach the gospel to all, to every creature. 
and Peter is so hard-headed. But you know what? I think we're pretty hard-headed too. And that was something as I was studying again this week and, and pr bring it, bringing it to a conclusion. I thought it was really a, a, a reminder and a wake-up call to me, as, as we will see a little bit later. Here's Peter, who is a leader of the church. Here's Peter, who is one of the apostles. Here's Peter who has been used greatly by God, even in this circumstance. And even Peter is still learning, isn't he? He's learning about himself. Wow. I, I now see, which means he didn't see it before, that Peter had a prejudice that was deep and wide against Gentiles, as, as his brothers and sisters, the Jews, had. And he had a lack of understanding about God's heart and God's love and God's mercy. And we do too, don't we? And it's a good reminder for us. We may have been Christians a long time. Some of us have been. And, we're st and there's still a place and they're still learning for us. They're still growing for us as we, see, as we see with Peter. But he says, now I see. He says, through his name, everyone who believes. Wow, you don't have to become a Jew first. Everyone believes. And then... He says, we looked at, remember all those verses? I gave you two screenfuls of verses last week, and we're not going to do that again, but that was to help you. What does it say? He says, pa Paul writes much later, he says, he, God, he wants everyone to be saved and understand the truth. Not just a few. He wants everyone. He wants everyone to be saved and understand the truth. I was so blessed when Flora they, they were here in the first service when Flora called me over and she said, Pastor Jennifer, Kingsley wants to tell you something. So Kingsley is now, I'm not a Sunday school teacher. I think he's seven or he's eight years old now, maybe. He's seven or eight. Nobody told Kingsley, Kingsley, now be a good witness for Jesus. Take your Bible to church and tell your classmates about Jesus. Nobody told him to do that. Do you know when Flora found out, she did not know he had done that. It was that evening when he came back from school and he told, Mommy, you know what I did today? Kingsley went. I was so encouraged and so truly, I was so blessed. And he says he wants everyone to be saved and understand the truth. Kingsley was, act, was living that out this week. For there's only one God and one mediator. You see, there are a lot of people who believe there is a God. A lot of people believe that. And here's humanity, and here's man, and there's God. The rub comes in accepting and understanding there's one mediator. There's only one in the middle. Religion is our attempt, is the world's attempt, is man's attempt to figure out some way, some way, somehow to get to God in some manner. And God gives Jesus God gives Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. So we don't get hung up on the fact that there's just one way. We're thankful that there is a way and that God has revealed him. And so when people come to us, or if we ourselves have that thought, yes, but what about this? What about that? What about the people that, that haven't heard? Is God going to send them to hell? Well, what about this and what about that? We come to this and we look at these questions Look at the story of Cornelius, and then we look at some other scriptures. Let's look at some of them, and let's look at, look at some things that we know about God. We know that God is good. Yes? We know that God is good. How do we know that God is good? First of all, he says he's good, and God doesn't lie. We read in Psalm 86, 5, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive all. It is a shame that we, as Christians... We come to something like this, and if we were honest, we would confess that instead of that word ready, you and I put another word in there. We really do. Do you know what we say instead of ready to forgive all? We think reluctant to forgive all. Do we not? Have you ever felt God was reluctant to forgive you? You'd done something and whatever, and you thought, oh, no. And you didn't want to go talk to God about it. Instead, you stayed home. You didn't come to church. You didn't want to read your Bible. You didn't want to pray because you'd done something. Oh. Seriously, I talk with Christians all the time that do that. I used to do that as well. That's not how God is. He's ready to forgive all. 
He's ready to forgive all. So God is good. What's one of the best examples we have of that? Adam and Eve. They blew it. They blew it so badly for themselves and for us as well, didn't they? They blew it for us. And they ran and they hid. What did God do? I know what I would do. I'd do the same thing you'd do. You stupid people! How could you blow it so badly? Now all of the world! Does, does he do that? No. He goes and he searches for them. And he provides what is needed at their moment of need. What does it say in Luke 19.10? For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. So when I read that, and when I see the examples in the Bible, what that says to me is, God is good. He's not bad, he's good. He's good. As we, as we look at Cornelius and as we think about these questions, let's look at another one. Psalm 98, 2. The Lord has made known his salvation. God hasn't kept it hidden. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Nobody will be able to stand before God one day and say, you didn't tell me. I had no chance. I knew nothing. Well, this comes as a surprise to me. What? There's a God? There's a heaven and there's a hell? Now, I'm going to talk just a minute about our responsibility as Christians, okay? But God is good. God is good. Romans 1, 19 and 20. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them, from the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made. As a result, people are without excuse. I, I think of uh, Stephen Hawking, the great uh, uh, scientist is the best word. I was going to say astrophysicist. I don't know if that would be what he was, scientist. What he knew of the universe, what he knew of the natural world, and yet he said, we don't need God to explain this. We can do it on our own. A and I don't rejoice that he has found the truth, but I believe he knows the truth now. When he, when he saw this is what God has done, that so that men are without excuse. God reveals himself. I gave you the example last week of the student of mine in Beijing who'd become a Christian, led her sister and her mother to the Lord very, very quickly. And then the sister began to, to uh, um, uh, witness to the people, her, work, her workmates in the office. Of course they were atheists. It's Beijing, China. You know, and it was 27, 27 years ago. Of course they're atheists. And the guy would laugh at her and he'd ask her out and she'd tell him about Jesus. He'd laugh at her and she'd, and, uh, he'd, laugh at her and she'd, he'd ask her out and she'd tell him about Jesus. Until one day he was riding home on the bus and he looked at creation, trees, clouds, hills. And he suddenly had a re revelation. God made it. And his second revelation was, and I'm sinful and I'm lost without God. God does that. And he got saved. And he got saved. I was talking with somebody recently, uh, and in this service, uh, I'm going to change the, let me change the things around just a little bit, um, of someone who they, uh, sorry, I'm going to mess up the grammar, but for the purposes of the story, you'll understand. They themselves at one time had been a very, had been very, a very devout Muslim, very, very devout Muslim. In the family there were imams, Muslim teachers, and this person had a revelation of God, came to the Lord. This is many years ago now, and this person now is in the home country where it is illegal to proselytize Muslims. It is illegal to preach the gospel to Muslims. But I'd heard some things, and Pastor Renee and I both know uh, we both know this person, and I was talking with them recently when they were, uh, when they were here. And I'd, I asked, I said, I have heard, and because this person works with underground uh, converted Muslim Christ Christians now in, in the home country. And I said, I have heard, and this person immediately said, it's true. It's true. I said, how have, 
how have they heard? How have they become? Because it's illegal. It, it's illegal to proselytize. It's illegal to preach. And this person said, time and time and time again, time again, as they have talked with these former Muslims who've now become Christians, they tell of dreams and visions of Jesus. Jesus appeared to them in a dream. Jesus appeared in a vision and said, I am the way, I am the truth. And they have been converted, and they've been converted. It's absolutely true. God is good. God is good. And not only that, God is just as well. God is just. All of you know, how many of you have memorized Jeremiah 29, 11? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, right? So we love that one. We hang on to that verse. I encourage you, go on and read verses 12 and 13 that come after that. Because God is not only good, God is also just. God is also just. And I want, to look, I want to give you about three verses just to look at that, then I'll tell you some other stories as well. Um, let me give you another word, if you do, if you, uh, another translation for the word plans. We memorize it, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. And that is one of the, that is one of the meanings of that word. But there's another meaning of that word. The other meaning of that word is thoughts. And that's also an accurate translation uh, from the original. And so God says, for I know the thoughts I have towards you. How many of us, at, even as Christians sometimes, how many of us have thought that God thought ill of us just a little bit, right? God wasn't pleased with us. God was dissatisfied with us. God was this with us and God w was that with us. But God who does not lie, remember this is the God who doesn't lie, says, I know my thoughts for you and they're good thoughts. They're good thoughts. And I want to encourage you, because you know what? You are not some special beast or character or individual. You're a person. And you're talking to people, other people out there that are just like you. The things that you struggle with are the things that they struggle with as well. It's true. It's true. And you can share who you are and what you are and your struggles. Please don't try to be too religious with people because they'll see, they'll look right through you. They'll see right through you. They, they know. They know. Just be who you are. Be who you are. Be, and be a witness for Jesus. Be a witness for Jesus. Well, Lord willing, we, <laughs> we may get that to that at the end. But these are things that they struggle with as well. And you can say, you know, God says he doesn't lie. And what he says is his thoughts towards us are good thoughts. And we can know those thoughts and we can know those plans when we begin a relationship with him. And he wants to have a relationship with you. That's something, it's simple. You say, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know if I can even do the four points. Well, honey, if Kingsley could do the four points, you don't think... <laughs> You can do the four points. Kingsley did them. He's eight years old. He's eight years old. We can, we can learn some basics. But more than that, we're witnesses. We're witnesses, as we'll see as we come to an end um, just uh, very, very shortly this morning. But we see that he says, look at what, what Jesus, what God says. He says, you will, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with what? All your heart. All your heart. God is just. God is just. And if a person is seeking with all of his heart, with all of her heart, God says, I'm going to hear you. I'm going to come to you. You will find me and I will find you. This is the word of God. Look at another one. Deuteronomy 4.29. Now, by the way, there are many more verses than this. I didn't just search a long time to try to find one. There are many more. I'm just giving you a couple here. If from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you look for him with what? All your heart and all your soul. That's why Cornelius found God. That's why God sent an angel 
to Cornelius. That's why God sent, gave, gave a vision to Peter and said, Peter, you go with these men that are going to come downstairs in a minute. Uh, by the way, he doesn't even tell Peter that the men are Gentiles. Did you notice that? He just said, there are three men downstairs. Don't be afraid to go with them. I have sent them. You know why? Because God knows Peter really well. And if God had said, if the Spirit had said, now there are three Gentiles. No, Lord. Oh, he's so holy, isn't he? He's holier than God is, isn't he? No, Lord, I've never eaten anything unclean. He says no to God, like he knows better, as we do sometimes as well. So God doesn't even tell him it's three Gentiles. But because of this, God sends Peter. God sends Peter. Remember, this is the God who cannot lie. If you look for him with all of your heart, do you have to have full understanding? No! But look for him with all of your heart. I gave you the story of Mrs. Fu last week from Singapore who worshipped every god in Singapore. And believe me, Singapore has a bunch of gods. M uh, many more than Hong Kong, by the way. Many more than Hong Kong because it's a, 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 multi a multicultural, really a multicultural society uh, with... Uh, with uh, Muslims, uh, with, with uh, Chinese, with Tamil, with all of these others. And so in her, in her home, as I told you, remember, she had all the Chinese gods, Gunyam, the goddess of mercy, the god of war, and because it's Singapore, of course, the monkey god. Because that, that's uh, the, the, always in Singapore, the, all of these gods. And then just to make sure, remember, just to make sure, she went to the Hindu temple as well, where there are even more gods, thousands thousands. And then remember, she looked at those and she thought, they can't all be God. Ding, ding, ding. Right? <laughs> they can't all be God. God. Honestly, God gives us a brain. They can't all be God. And she simply prayed, God, whichever one of you is real, if you will reveal yourself, if you will show me which one of you is real, you're the one I'm going to worship. And then I used the example of, of Alice. Um, in the first service. I want to use it again. I used her before. I asked her, um, Alice is, is over here with Carmen, and she was with us in the park. Um, I did not realize it was so long. I said, Alice, how long have you been a Christian? How many years, Alice? 18. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Pastor Renee and I remember. I don't know if any of, uh, any of the rest of you do. Pastors remember things like this, by the way. Um, Pastor Renee was preaching that Sunday, and uh, Alice had come with uh, another Christian friend had brought her. We didn't know anything about Alice, but we found out later that Alice's religion was mystical Buddhism out of, Th out of Thailand. Alice, did you go to the temple every day? Almost. Almost. Alice, did you burn incense almost every day? Every, that was every day. Alice, did you try to do good deeds every day? Yes, of course. Alice, did you pray? Yes. And then she came and she heard one sermon. I don't even know if it was really great, Pastor Renee. Sorry, I don't remember now. <laughs> but it was a salvation message. And you know, we don't always preach salvation, salvation messages at Lighthouse. But we did. He did that day. And I still remember. Remember what her testimony was when she accepted the Lord and never looked back? Alice said, hmm, I thought to myself, what has Buddha ever done for me? <laughs> True, really, just that simple. And I, I'm not making, I'm not trying to make fun, make light of in that sense, but it's true. What is Buddha? What has, only Jesus has come from heaven. Only Jesus has died. Only Jesus has rose again. Hallelujah, that there is a way and God has revealed him to us. God is, God is just. And when we search for him with all of our hearts, and you, you may talk to somebody who doesn't have, who has a little bit of truth, or maybe almost no truth, but they want, but their hearts are sincere. God can reach such a person. God is just. Let me tell you about Papa Long. Uh, sorry, the pictures aren't very clear because they're about 70 or 80 years old. His name is Papa Long, and he was a headman from an Aborigine tribe in Malaysia in the 50s, 50s through 60s. He's, he's dead now. And Papa Long, one day with a group from his village and from his tribe, 
from Malaysia in the Pahang area of Malaysia, deep in the jungle, deep in the jungle, happened to be standing out by one of the roads, one of the highways. And passing by was a young Bible student who was going to Bible school in KL, the capital of Malaysia, because there was no Bible school in Singapore at that time. And, but he was from Singapore. And he saw this group of Aborigines out by the road, and he stopped and he started to talk to them. And as he talked with them, he asked Papa Long, where do you live? Where, and so forth and so on. And then he said, may I come and visit you and bring my pastor with me from Singapore, from my church in Singapore. And Papa Long said, oh yes, we, would, we, we welcome you. And so, not a long time later, a group from Singapore, and some of you have heard this story before, this is the actual picture. I'm sorry, I'm American, I think I'm too big to fit in that little boat. Um, I, I'd show you more pictures if I could. I think it's about this, it's about this far from the water, and it's only about this wide. Um, it's, a, it's, a hollowed out, it's a hollowed out tree. And um, they sent a letter and they said, okay, we're coming, if you can't see it. His name is William Tan, and he was a sort of Malay, Malay background Chinese, so he spoke Malay very well, because Papalong spoke Malay. Uh, not Chinese and of course not English and so they'd written a letter and they said we're coming and so they found somebody to get them across the river and then they trekked four mi uh, not four miles four hours through the jungle to get there um, along with the pastor of that church from Singapore and the pastor of that church from Singapore was this handsome young man um, that founded Lighthouse that's Dad Nolan way back when, way back. Oh, you said, oh, yeah. Don't wait, keep, keep the thread, don't get lost. <laughs> Stay with the story. He's with Papa Long in the middle. Here's, this is William Tan again. William just passed away this last year. He came as translator. And they preached the gospel, and the whole tribe believed. The whole tribe believed. But what's wonderful, when, as we talk about God being good and God being just, just as with Cornelius. They said, Papa Long, we sent a letter that we were coming. Did you receive the letter? Papa Long said, no, I didn't receive the letter. Well, of course he didn't receive the letter. They lived in the middle of the jungle and they were illiterate. Of course they wouldn't, didn't receive the letter. But Papa Long said, he said, you know, he said, usually at this time of the year, our tribe moves north and we go up into the Great Lakes where we fish. For the, for the, maybe it was the rainy season, I'm not sure. He said, but, he said, the Great Spirit told me that you were coming and that you would tell me what we need to hear. And then as they were there, they found that he had a big picture, that Papa Long had this big picture, and he'd had it for about 30 years. Now, I'm older than a lot of you, so you have no idea what I'm talking about, but some of you may. Sunday school is great. We've got all these pictures, right? We have all these activities. We have these characters. We have all of these things, but it didn't used to be that way. Back in the day in Sunday school, every Sunday school story would have just one big picture on a Sunday school roll like that. And it would be literally, the picture would be, oh, I used to love them. They'd be about this big and they would be attached at the top and it would just be one picture for the whole story. And somehow, some way, Papa Long had one picture from the roll, and it was a picture of Saul on the road to Damascus being struck blind by God. And Papa Long had that picture. And he knew that part of the story. But the only thing he could say was, this man, he was struck blind by God, the God of heaven, when he was going to this city. That's the only thing Papa Long knew about the story. But he had that piece, he had that rolled up, and it was almost falling apart because it was, you know, it was just this old piece of paper. But every time the tribe would gather, Papa Long would take that picture out, he'd lift it up, and he would tell the story to the tribe. Why? Because he wanted to know God. How much truth? A speck. A speck of truth, that's it.
didn't even know the name Jesus. But there was enough there that his heart latched on because he wanted to know God. You and I are around people and we are so hesitant to share Jesus with people, aren't we? Honestly, we really are. Because we think, well, what if, what if? You do not know what's going on in that person's heart. You don't know the hunger in that person's heart. You don't know, just as pop along, they, in a sense, may be holding on to one picture from a story and have this much truth. Don't let your fear stop you. Don't let your lack of anything stop you. Peter says, we are witnesses. That's, to me, that's one of the main points of this story. He, and when he starts preaching, he says to them, now you know about Jesus, you heard how he whatever, but then he follows up by saying, we are witnesses. There's the key, brothers and sisters. We are witnesses. Now, people may know some things, but you and I are witnesses. What does that mean? With our lives. We know what God has done. Jesus has done it for us. It's not something we have heard about. We're witnesses. We're part of the story. We're part of the story. Why doesn't God just let an angel tell Cornelius? Because Jesus hasn't died for an angel. An angel wasn't redeemed. That angel didn't fall. That angel was from heaven and knew nothing of the saving grace of God to transform a life. But you and I do, as Peter did. So who gets tapped on the shoulder to go? Not the perfect evangelist, because remember Peter said, No, Lord. Even at that moment, God's not looking for perfection. He'll work on you. God's looking for availability, and he's looking for witnesses, and that's why Peter goes. That's why Peter goes. In this story, you think, well, that's the end of the story. Uh-uh, it's not. Here's the story to this point. This story is, this picture is from about a month and a half ago. Mom and Dad were so excited. They contacted the people that produce the audio Bible, the Faith Comes by Hearing, Proclaimers, uh, that can be used without electricity, that, it, that you can hear in your own language, in your mother tongue, in your mother tongue. And they sent it from the U.S. to Singapore, and then they took it from Singapore up into the jungles where Papalong, uh, where the tribe had lived. Of course, Papalong is long dead now. Um, but here, this skinny little old woman right here is Papalong's daughter. And she was a young, young woman just married when dad went. The young Bible school student that happened to see a group of Aborigines and just happened, happened to stop by the road, but God is just, is Alfred Ong, who is now retired also. He's a retired minister. That's his wife, Jenny, next to, next to the daughter. And they found that that one tribe, the whole tribe turned to the Lord, that today there are 19 Aborigine villages that have turned to the Lord. 19. 19. Why? God is good and God is just. But there must be a witness. Angels aren't enough. And may I say to you, don't take this the wrong way, but Jesus isn't enough. You understand what I'm saying? Because God chooses to partner with us and it's time to stop. Stop with, let's just stop with this. Let me go on just a little bit. End with this. I give you two words. Response and responsibility. Cornelius and all of them respond immediately. It's so easy. They don't even pray the sinner's prayer, do they? They don't even come forward. They're sitting there listening. And God gives them the Holy Spirit to show they've believed and I accept them. God is not hard to find for the sincere person and the sincere heart. But look at what Peter says. He says, we are witnesses, just as you and I. Now we get, that was the last, that was the point. We are witnesses. So there's the response and there's the responsibility because he is the one whom God appointed as a judge of the living and the dead. So there's a responsibility.
there's a responsibility because there will be a judgment one day. There will be a judgment. But until that time, until that time, you and I are witnesses. We're witnesses. Don't be afraid. You don't know what God has done in somebody else's heart, just like Papa Long, just like Sister Fu in Singapore, just like those, mu those Muslims in Malaysia that, had dream that are, are having, sorry, not past tense, it's ongoing right now, dreams of Jesus. We're witnesses. That's the beauty of this story. There's a whole other part of this story that says, oh yeah, but this story, you know, it's really about Gentiles coming into the church. That's true. That's true. But for our purposes, hey, you and I, we're all Gentiles, aren't we? There are other things for us in this story as well. Let's close in prayer just very quickly this morning. Hallelujah.